Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and welcome to something new that I am trying. I'm going to call it DevOps Bytes. Why not? And my goal with these videos are to produce some videos that might not be quite as polished, but hopefully get some content out to you quicker. And then maybe I'll come back later and try to make a more polished video. As well, I might try to make a video that's that are shorter. These may be longer. I don't know. You're probably going to see me mess up, but I'm trying to get content out there that I think you might be interested in, regardless of it being necessarily the top notch or better quality videos that I sometimes make. So with that, what I want to talk about today are iteration fields on GitHub projects. Now I've got a couple of videos out there already on GitHub projects. If I can figure out the editing, I will make fancy things appear on the screen now. So you might have some links to my other projects on the screen now. If not, then you can find them on the YouTube page. And I'm going to try to build off of those with these DevOps Bytes videos. This video, we're going to talk about the iteration field. So as you can see on my GitHub project here, I've got three or four issues uh, that I've already created. And then I've added onto my project board. And what I want to do now is actually add a new field onto my project board and a specific type of field called an iteration field. And the idea behind an iteration field is it allows you to set a range, like a sprint range maybe, like a two-week period or a three-week period that you're working on this particular issue. It allows you to balance the upcoming work, uh, see work that's going to be happening in the future, all of that. So let's add in a new field. And we will call this, we'll change our field type to be iteration. And just for grins, we'll call this the Mickey iteration field. Now with iterations, you can choose when it starts. So this one's going to start on February 20th. And I can choose the duration of each iteration, and this is changeable. So in this case, I'm going to set some iterations of just, say, two weeks. Two weeks works. And I'm going to say Save and Create. And what this does is it creates a field called Mickey Iteration. And it automatically creates three iterations for me. So I'm, I'm in my current iteration right now. And you can see I've got my next one coming up March 5th and my next one coming up March 19th. And I can come in here and I can say, okay, we're going to add this issue to the first iteration. We'll add this issue also to the current iteration. And then we'll add this one, say, to iteration two. So you can easily come in here and I can assign my issues to the appropriate iteration. Now, I can also control the iterations by going to the settings of my project and if I select Mickey iteration you can see I can change the iteration field name I can add more iteration fields so by default it will since I have this set for two week sprints or two week iterations it will then add more iterations for me so you can easily add a new iteration just by you know clicking the button or I can go to more options and I could say maybe starting here, I'm going to change this to be three week sprints. And I'll click add. And then when I click the add iteration, it will add more iterations for me. I can click the save button to save all those. And if I go back to my project, then you'll now see that we have all of those iterations listed. So I could maybe move this one over to iteration four if I wanted to. So if we go back to settings and we go to that custom field, so you can see we were able to add new iterations, we're able to modify existing iterations. So maybe I want to change the name on iteration four to say this is the best iteration. So I can change the name. I can also change the time frame on that iteration if I wanted to. We'll save that change. 
And you may also want to be able to, since you're planning these sprints or these iterations, you may also want to be able to insert breaks. So maybe you're going to have a break between iteration three and iteration four. So if you move your mouse over the line here, you can see there's an insert break. And I can click insert break. And it, by default, creates a break of three weeks because that was the last period I was doing things. And then you'll see it changes all of the other iterations as appropriate. And I'll click Save to save all those changes. So now you can see that we've updated everything. We can go back to over here to our main view of our project page. We can see, hey, look, my iteration name picked up as appropriately. We can see all the, we can see obviously there's a jump there. So there's a break there where we can't assign things. So this looks great. Now, I have a couple of other things I can do. So I can, on a project board here, I could do things such as, um, let's not change this one. Let's create a new view. Let's create another table view. And for this table view, let's add that field back in. So the Mickey iteration field. And I can click the three dots here by Mickey Iteration. And I could do things like group by. So I can see an easily group of, hey, here's all the stuff that's in the first iteration. And here's all the stuff that's in the fourth iteration. I like this feature of being able to group and, and filter and such. I can also, let's delete this view. You can have multiple views, but let's delete that view just to clean things up. I can also come over here and create a new view and I can create what's called a roadmap view. And with a roadmap view, I can say, I want my roadmap to start with my current iteration and end the iteration date. And what this now gives me is, you know, a Gantt charty type of view that shows me, okay, I have these two issues there that run into, say, then my next issue is way over here. I can change my view um, from month to, say, quarter to get a little bit better. Or let's go year even. And so I can see where my different issues that I'm working on fall in, in the range of things that I have going on. Obviously, I can sort thing. I can sort by different values if I want to. I can say, you know, add in the iteration name so I can see the iteration that's that's necessarily there. Um, milestones is something you can also use with your issues to say your issues are part of a milestone. So you could have your milestone show up here if you wanted to. You can also filter. So I can come in here and I can say iteration colon. may not have done that right. Let's try that again. Well, let's save our changes first. And now let's say if I go iteration. I see I'm not doing something right with the filtering. So let's see if we can figure that out. Give me one second here. Let me see if I can figure out what I'm doing wrong with filtering by my iterations. All right, so it should be that I can type this. And so then I could say at current. And it's supposed to just show me the current, but I'm doing something wrong. So let's see if we can figure out what I'm doing wrong here. Let's go back over to this view for a second. Okay, so maybe it's, maybe a big screen, maybe it's a screen thing. Let's see, because the keyword that you should be able to filter by is iteration. But that 
doesn't seem to like that. So I'm doing something incorrect. Let's try one more time. See, proving to you that this stuff is live. And you know what? Let's just create a new view just because we can. Last ditch attempt to make this work. I give up. I don't know what's going on. So the filter is there. There is a filter called iteration. I, however, am struggling to make that filter work. So we won't worry about it for right now. Because they're just not recognizing the keyword. End of the day though, you have the ability to add this iteration field and you have the ability to say create a roadmap view which gives you you know kind of a I, won't, I hate to say Gantt charty but it's Gantt charty like view of of your issues that you're working with you can and you can also come into here if you wanted to we'll change this view to be back to be a table view Let's see, do you like my keyword on the table? Nope, you don't like my keyword on the table either. Oh, let's add the iteration field. Just for grins, if I type Nikki, oh, look at that, we solved it. So you gotta provide the actual name of the iteration field that you've given it, that I was typing just iteration, and I should have been typing Mickey iteration. So we can come on this page and we can say the Mickey iteration field. And with that, we can say at current, and it only shows me the information for the current iteration. Or we could say at next or at previous, or we could say anything great uh, at next, which shows nothing. Or we could say, because we don't have anything that's just next, or we could say anything greater than X next. And there you can see there's mine that's way out in the future. So there you go. So it's not about just typing the word iteration. It's about typing the actual name of the field, which makes sense when you think about it. So there you go. There's your quick introduction to iterations. If you found this helpful, I'd love for you to let me know. I'll continue to do some more of these little DevOps bytes. If you don't like this format because it's too, it's not as polished or whatever, let me know that as well. But if you do like it, please leave a comment to let me know that you liked it. Please click that like button and please subscribe to the channel because all of that feeds to the YouTube algorithm, which ultimately helps me. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.